This tutorial is specifically made for vinyl cutters. If you are using the Action Illustrated Clip Art Collection, most all of the regular clip art is vinyl ready. Here are two of our images, and if I look at them in wireframe, which is how your vinyl cutter sees all of this artwork, you can see that each of these are individual vinyl ready. But if I take one image and put it on top of the other, that's no longer vinyl ready. So to make this vinyl ready, I just need to do a little trimming and welding. I'm going to ungroup both of these. And then I'm going to use the black silhouette shape of the heart to trim out the cream colored shapes of the wings. So I have my black piece selected and then I go ahead and hold down my shift button to select the wing and then hit trim. And I'm going to do that for each of these. Trim. You can see if I move the black silhouette piece away, you can see that the wings have been trimmed. Then I would simply need to weld the black silhouette piece of the heart and each of the wings together to make them into one shape. Now looking at this in wireframe, you can see that this is vinyl ready and I could cut this. Next we're going to make text with a tail. This was covered in the tutorial on creating exciting text, but it definitely applies here too. So I have my text typed out. I want to make sure it's a cursive font, something that ends with a loop up like this. This is called Dolly Script. I got it off of the font site dafont.com. I get a bunch of great fonts from that website. And then I would import in my vector tail. This tail comes from the Action Illustrated collection. I just want to place the tail underneath my text here so that it looks okay. Then I would use my shape tool to edit the nodes to make it look like it's coming off of the end of the S. If I'm printing this design, then this would be enough, but if I'm going to vinyl cut like I want to do here, I just need to weld these two together. Because you can see in our wireframe that there's lots of overlapping shapes. So I just take my text, hold down my shift, click on my tail, and weld them together. I could come back at that point too and edit any nodes that I want to. We'll go ahead and make this a straight line and this one as well. Now let's go ahead and add a word in my tail. Just type it out using my text tool. I'm going to change it into the same font. I'm going to go ahead and add an envelope onto it. We'll do a single arc mode. And then I'm going to rotate it just a hair. If I look at this in wireframe, you can see that this is not vinyl ready either. Each of these little loops is crossing over each other. So if I have this clicked on, all I need to go to is Object and Shaping and then click on Weld and that's going to weld each of those letters together to make it vinyl ready. Now if I wanted to add an outline onto this, we would use the Contour tool instead of adding an outline. I'm going to go ahead and grab my Contour tool here. 
and click and drag outwards. So right, I can just manually go ahead and select out. I want it to be two steps and I can adjust my size right here. Once I like the way it looks, I would just come up here to Object and Break Contour Apart. And that will make it so I can color these each independently of one another. Because we use the Contour tool instead of the Outline tool, if I view this in wireframe, you can see that it has made vinyl ready vector lines. Now let's go over how to put the tiger stripes into a word to make it vinyl ready. If you saw the tutorial on power clipping, we were able to put the stripes in the words really easily, but it was not vinyl ready. So to make it vinyl ready, we're going to use the trim tool. I'm actually just going to make a rectangle and then I'm going to trim the word tigers out of it. So click on tiger, hold down shift to my rectangle and trim. So that leaves me a rectangle with a hole cut through it. And then I just put that rectangle on top of my tiger stripes. And these of course are vector tiger stripes. And then I would use this template that I've made, hold down shift and then click on the tiger stripes. And now I'm going to trim that out. So we'll go ahead and view that now in wireframe and you can see that my tiger stripes are there and intact. Now let's go over how to do a print and cut. That would be if you have a printer that's going to print this design out and then cut around it for a sticker or for a heat press or something like that. This design is from Action Illustrated. Uh, it's a design made up of a bunch of different objects. Some of them are overlapping lines. So to add a cut line around everything, I simply select everything and then click on Create Boundary. That creates a shape that circles around everything. That I would make my cut line. If I want to extend the print a little further than my cut line, that's really simple. I'm just going to actually take my boundary shape that has been created and copy and paste it so I have a second one. And on that second one, I'm going to make the outline the same color brown in my design and I'm going to make it thicker. And then I'm going to move this shape with the thick brown outline to the back of my design. So now you can see that my cut line actually exists in the middle of the brown, which gives us a little bit of wiggle room. Now if I had a design like this one, where there's holes in my design right here and here and down here, I would not use the create boundary because if you can see if I do that, it does not take into account these holes that I would also want cut out. Let's go ahead and delete that. So the way I would create cut lines for this design is I would actually select everything in my design and then I would copy and paste it so that I have two designs on top of each other. And then I'm going to take my top design and I'm going to weld all the pieces together. This new shape that I've created is going to be my cut line. So I'm going to make it have no fill and I'm going to use my cut line color to outline it. And now you can see that it has included the inner shapes. If I want to add wiggle room on this one too, I would do it the same way that I did last time. Copy and paste that shape, 
change the outline and send it to the back. Let's look at this last design. This design here is different from the other two in that some of the outer part of the design is actually text. Um, I cannot just take this and throw a boundary around it because you can see that it looks like it's cutting off some of my text. The reason that this is happening is because this text here is actually an outline. So I've clicked on this piece right here, this yellow piece with a yellow outline, and it's not been converted to curves yet. And so let me go ahead and get rid of my create boundary. All I need to do in this case, I'm gonna grab the text that is going to be on the outermost of my design, and I go up to object and convert outline to object. That actually is going to make these outlines into shapes now. So this is actually a vector shape. Now I can go ahead and grab everything and do the create boundary, which will create a boundary going all the way outside. And that would be my cut line. So that's a quick overview of getting your images vinyl ready.